Good morning. Just do a look and just stay here in silence. <laughs> oh dear, let's see who's coming in today. Just hanging about. Good morning. I can't see any comments because my phone's turned the other way, just the way that it's laying on my computer. So if you're saying hello and wanting a response, hello, but I can't see your hellos, but I'm assuming you're there. I can see your profile pictures. So morning, Jess. Morning, Auntie Julie. Hey, I'm getting a good memory. It's like a memory game of profile pictures. Um, morning, Elaine. And da -da. I'm not very good at adding lib. Morning, Barbara. Always here. <laughs> mm, can't see. Oh, some of these profile pictures have got me. I don't know. Morning, Joan. Nice, clear photo of you. Morning. Hope you're okay. Feeling good. Anyway, people are coming in now and tuning in. That's brilliant. There's like a 30 second delay between going live and you all responding. <laughs> so that's why we just give it a bit of time. So I hope you're feeling good. The sun is trying to come out this morning. How hot was it yesterday? How hot was it last night? Those of you with kids, were they really had bad nights? <laughs> oh, my kids were like, I can't sleep, it's too hot. Like, don't complain about the weather. <laughs> but hey, I hope you're all feeling well. We're going to be uh, looking at Ephesians, um, Ephesians 1 this morning. Luke started us off in Ephesians, the first part in Ephesians yesterday. And uh, we're going to be looking at verses 15 to 23. Um, so if you've got your Bibles to hand, you can get them out and um, we'll unpack a little bit this morning, this morning. Right. Let's let's just stop there, Leo, with this morning and say today instead. I'm going to try really hard. <laughs> OK. That's lovely to see you all this morning. OK. This <laughs> Lost it. Lost it. Okay, so um, let's let's read Ephesians 1, 15 to 16. Let's just do that one first. Okay. Oh, it would be helpful if I got my Bible. <laughs> oh, and also my, my computer might crash with all my notes on. So it's been really temperamental and just going in and out all the time. So I'm hopefully it is written on my heart. <laughs> but let's 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 rely on God this morning. So um, Ephesians 15, the first two verses there. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, I have not stopped giving thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers. This whole passage that we're going to read today is it's so much in it. Um, there's a whole preach in there, but I'm just going to pick out a few things that have stood out to me. You know, Paul starts by writing um, for this reason, for this reason. And it's there because it's a re there's a reason for it. Um, there were, we know that the early church in Ephesus was uh, a random group of people that were chosen by God. And, and Luke talked a little bit about that yesterday. And, but they lived in very exciting times. It was a very new church. They were all excited about being together. And so that's why Paul says for this reason, because it was an early church, he thanks God. And Paul mentions two things in here he's, that he's thankful for, for their people's faith and for their love for each other. And that's the two things, really, that we've all got in common. When, as a church comes together, we've got those two things in common. It is our faith in Jesus and it is our love for one another. Um, and, you know, we've all got we wouldn't exactly put ourselves together in a family, would we? That's what church is made of. And we always say, don't we? Oh, we're a messy church. <laughs> and we come with all of our baggage and all our weirdness. <laughs> um, but we brought together, being brought together, designed by God to, um, to live in faith and love, to, you know, spread the gospel of Jesus. 
that is our one true cause together. That is our hope that we have place our faith in and our love. We're not a community. We're not in community with each other because we are a type of people who are naturally drawn together, are we? When Paul wrote to the Ephesians, he was thanking God for their love. And that was proof that God was breaking down in those days the barrier between Jews and Gentiles. Our love is evidence of the gospel, the power of the gospel to break down the barriers like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks of race, of ages, of economic classes, whatever. We, you know, that is the power of the gospel. It breaks it down. So today, just that little, those two verses, we're going to thank God um, for what God is doing in our church. We are a group of people drawn together for one cause. And um, that is our hope, our belief, our faith and our love for one another to spread the gospel right so okay ephesians verse seven da, da, da. i keep asking that the god of our lord jesus christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better just that verse there two things that he was drawing out the spirit of revelation and wisdom we all need to know God better. And those two things help us to know God better. We are made in the image of God, which means that, you know, we ref reflect him. We cannot learn who, um, uh, who we are until we begin to know and learn more about who God is, right? Um, and it's the spirit of wisdom and, and revelation that helps us to learn more about God. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons why people don't know who, what their identity is, what their gifting is, what they're, you know, designed to do because they don't know who they are in Christ. And um, they'll never learn what they can do, what their potential is if they don't know and discover who God is. We reflect him and therefore it's so important that we come to know God better. And um, that's the reason why we exist, that we may know God better. So we pray for that today. Um, whatever daily pressures and problems that we have, we know that with God, when we know him better, we make better decisions and he will take care of everything. Right. So verse 18 to 19. Can't find any glasses. Well, I have got glasses. I don't know why I didn't put them on. Anyway, I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the say, in the saints. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that next bit. But it's the first bit. I pray also that your eyes might be enlightened. It might be, they might be opened, if you like. Have you ever said that saying, oh, I see what you mean? Yeah. Andrew Jenkinson is brilliant. He's the, it's his slogan of his life. Oh, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, he's trying to under, get people to understand what his heart is. And that's what it, that saying is. We don't see people, we don't see through people's minds and see what they're thinking. That's not what it's saying. Um, we under, there's an understanding that comes with what somebody is thinking. And the Bible says that, you know, our hearts have eyes too. And Paul is praying for that that their eyes might be enlightened, that our eyes are opened to the stuff that we know that we have learned that minds motivate our hearts. Do you remember that song years back where we sung, um, sometimes we do today, I don't, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I always say that, that was a weird thing to say, <laughs> to sing, open, my heart, I, my heart's not got any eyes. Um, but it was, it's an interesting word, but, um, but that's what Paul was praying, that our eyes of our hearts, um, will be opened it means that actually it goes from there to here when we know and understand when we know God better through the wisdom and, and um, revelation we begin to understand and that's when our hearts are enlightened that's when our hearts are open and um, again yeah, there's a connection isn't there between um, our hearts because that's our emotions um, that we may reflect and rejoice on God and who he is and what he's like and and that's when our when that saying, where that verse, our eyes might be opened. Oh, I see now. I understand what God is saying. Um, yeah. So Ephesians, where we got verse 19 to 23. And this is just reading the right straight through to the end. Um, let's have a look. The power is like, oh no, where we are, 18. Um, 
that we, you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in all the saints, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is like the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every title that can be given, not only in the present age, but also in the one to come. And God placed all things under his feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything um, in every way. We have the very same power that was in Christ that raised him from the bed, dead, bed, <laughs> dead. That's, that's incomprehensible that we have that we have that very same power. Um, the resurrection power of God was not actually a loud thing. Um, it was actually very quiet and the resurrection was so powerful, but yet it was quiet and we're used to things being loud and when we pl plug things in like a guitar amp or your tv or you know you, there's, when there's power um surge and there's a big bang isn't there the power that we're talking about today only begins when when we act when we act when we begin to exercise the gifts that god has given us then the power begins and uh, we will c accomplish things that will leave us thinking wow god that was totally you that was not me whatsoever i could not have done that in my own strength and um, paul says that god's power is made perfect in weakness and um, and if you feel weak if you feel inadequate there's this is no hindrance whatsoever to being used of God and exercising that very same power. Many of us never discover um, that God could do what God can do in our lives because we're waiting to feel some sort of powerful surge. We're, we're waiting to be, OK, I'm ready now to be powerful. It's not like that. We have to act. We have to take a step, step of faith and see God come through. We, it's on us to to exercise that um, I always think about you know when we first discovered Alexa <laughs> I was like how does that work how do they know what you're asking them to do asking her to do um, I just didn't understand how it worked and as I began to ask her questions and she'd give me the right answers I'm like how does that even work <laughs> Well, it's the same example of what the power of God is like, but resurrection power works in the same way. When we reach out to somebody, when we take a step, when you're teaching someone, when we're comforting someone who's in trouble or when we confront somebody who needs a bit of guidance, it works when you expect it to be there. And that's what it is. It works by faith. Um, and that's what we have to do. We have to put that faith into action. That is when the power of God is available and it's a wonderful power. And no, I'm, I've not got it. I'm not there yet. <laughs> We're all on a journey, aren't we? But, you know, if we could just do something or get into the habit of living that naturally supernatural lifestyle, um, we could see God do amazing things. And what would that look like when we're all doing that together? Wow, the church will be so powerful. So encourage yourself today, strengthen yourself in Jesus. Let's thank him um, for his work that he's doing amongst our church. He's doing amazing things. Um, and so let's pray today that you will understand um, what our hope, our value, our power that is available through Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'll just pray for you and then you can get on with your day. Lord Jesus, I just thank you um, for who you are. Wow. The, the resurrection power, Lord, that raised you from the dead is the, it's the same within us, Lord. Help us today to, to act on that. Help us to, Lord, put our um, works into faith. Father, help us to take that extra step of faith that we wouldn't normally do, Lord. And, and let us uh, marvel at your good works. Uh, you're so powerful and you're such a God of love at the same time. And, and you want to just do that through us, Lord, to minister to others, because it's not about us. It's about um, giving you the glory. It's all about you, Jesus. And, and God, help us to do that. Help us to um, know, want to know more about who you are. Help us to be led by the Spirit. Give us wisdom and revelation. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we will see you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, have a great day. 
um, whether whatever you're doing today, whether you're homeschooling, whether you're um, cleaning, whether you're doing your job, working, whether you're watching this later, I hope that you are all well. Have a great day. And also just to remind you, the prayer meeting tonight um, at 7.30, at the Zoom, at the Zoom, <laughs> Zoom app. So the information will be on the Facebook page. Um, so, yeah. And also to remind you, we announced this on Sunday, but we're going to be doing what we call the Cuppa Room, Ooh. where we'll, from 10.30 till 5 to 11, just before the meeting starts, the service starts at 11, there will be, the Cuppa Room will be open, um, which is a Zoom um, call. If you want to be together, have a cup of tea together, just check in, see how everyone's doing, um, it will be a great way um, to just say hi. And so, yeah, that'll be really fun to do. So, yeah, well, let's see. You. Don't worry, you don't have to get dressed. Keep your PJs on, it's fine. <laughs> All right, so have a great day and we'll see you tonight at the prayer meeting. Bye.